Hello everyone, uh, we are here when we have been talking about the use of stone in different purposes. So we have looked already into some of the different kind of stones and also different kind of structures starting with the, stru uh, the objects which are more sort of close to the more closely intertwined with the daily life activities and then we have also looked into the ones which are part of the royal enclosures which are also part of the temple complexes and so on. So we see that I mean there is a lot of different kind of um, expressions which, which have been uh, part of the way in which uh, stone is incorporated in this in this different um, modes of uh, storytelling at the same time different modes of devotion at uh, also at the same time like I mean paying homage to our ancestors and and many many different kind of expressions and how stone has always been a very important part of this this visual culture and material culture now here what we have so we have already looked into some of the stones for example the mathura sandstone and then the use of basalt so today we'll continue the discussion with looking into uh, the use of granite and basalt going back to that so we are still in the deccan region of india deccan and further south and here we are and this is uh, on on screen we have the ruins of the vijayanagara em empire and um, we we see what we see in this image why I wanted to particularly show this image is because to show, give a sense of the landscape there. So one can see that I mean this is the, the Vijayanagara empire as we know that I mean that, that is actually situated uh, right beneath the, the Deccan Sultanates and we will be touching upon Deccan Sultanates and so um, the Deccan Sultanates were there and um, uh, then um, beneath that we find that I mean this, this large chunk of the uh, Indian Peninsula was ruled by the Vijayanagara rulers and they, um, the Vijayanagara dynasty was active from mid 14th century to the mid 16th century and then the city of Hampi was sacked but then the rulers moved to further down south to Penukonda and Chandragiri. So what we find that there was a lasting presence of this Vijayanagara rulers in this area and the place where the city of Hampi or Vijayanagara was situated. So the emperor in the empire is known as Vijayanagara empire and at the same time the capital city of the empire was also known as Vijayanagara. So Vijayanagara is a, as, a, as a site is a very interesting one because uh, we see there is this river Tungabhadra and today the city or the this uh, medieval metropolis which is now in ruins. So this, this particular uh, site we find that I mean to be closely um, uh, you know uh, that, that, that is in a close proximity to the, to the river Tungabhadra and then around that area we have this one very important religious site that is the Matunga hill which is uh, been considered to be the birthplace of um, Hanuman, um, this, this Hindu god and then also uh, this, this area has also have some of the um, um, uh, people for, for um, at, at different times they have uh, created connections with this particular site with, with, the, with, the, um, with the kingdom of Kishkinda which was mentioned in the Hindu epic Ramayana. So there are some of those religious associations that we find with this site and the Matunga hill is right opposite of the city of Vijayanagara and the, the area was divided by the uh, river Tungabhadra and that is also something that we find that I mean there are many of these religious uh, sites, the sites which were considered to be sacred and Tungabhadra the river is also um, is, is also considered sacred the water and, and uh, the, the goddess the goddess uh, Pampa and that is how we find that how um, uh, this, this all these sacred sites for example with the Matunga hill with the, with the uh, deification of, of Tungabhadra and then there were, there were the other deities uh, who were the protective deities of, of the Vijayanagara empire and so on. So altogether they had this, um, the, this different 
different sites put together, we find that there was a tremendous uh, importance uh, the, of this site uh, from from the uh, from the Hindu religion's point of view. The, at the other side, and the other time, we also find that I mean the place uh, which was uh, again like I mean uh, further north from uh, Vijayanagara or Hampi, Anegondi. Anegondi is the place where we find that I mean some of the early fortifications were there and as you can see in this landscape that this is uh, the Deccan plateau, this very characteristic of Deccan plateau with all these boulders and these big chunks of rocks and the rocks are all granite. So, what happens in this that I mean this, this plateau like landscape already gives protection to uh, the people whoever try to uh, flourish there and at the same time we can we can uh, see that i mean how the the stones which are which are uh, found from these places they were also sort of carved and they were made use for making the fortification so that is how we see that there was a possibility for uh, surrounding the city with extra security and that is how this, this particular site became such an important one. So, in one hand we find this, this high religious importance uh, in, uh, for, for the Hindus in, in Vijayanagara and at the other hand we also find that this, this landscape and then the, the presence of this stable land and how there are so much of these stones available in abundance. And so, these stones which were which were then made part of the fortification for this city. So, that, that had also added to the flourishing of the city of Vijayanagara and then protecting it for uh, more than 200 years or so. So, this is something we find that how the natural landscape there and then the this particular kind of stone that we are talking about granite had contributed to the flourishing of this city. So, granite being one of the hardest rocks on earth. So, one can imagine that how the walls will not be easily penetrable and that is probably the reason how um, you know the, the the city of Vijayanagara was also made protected. So these are these are some of the things that even if we find that there are the political uh, reasons involved, there are the military strategies. Those were also there. So we are not specifically talking about um, the art practice in uh, but but we are talking about the this this broad material culture that how material is incorporated not only as part of understanding uh, you know like understanding spirituality religion or our daily needs but it's also something that gives protection to us so that is how we find that how this this particular material the, this this granite stone is something of high importance and uh, how that is the, the how those were incorporated uh, to 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 build this city to build this city of Vijayanagara which is known as Hampi today. So, the ruins that we find there it is spread it across uh, in, in this, uh, this, this large area and then what we have there for example, here as you can see that there is a this, the, there are the water harvesting systems like the Pushkarni which has been uh, uh, which the, the term which is used for it and we can see the river in the background here and then there are this kind of this uh, colonnade uh, and and uh, covered corridor like spaces. So, one can imagine that I mean how, how those those spaces might have been used here and uh, we have some specific information on them that how this used to be the places for the bazaar area. So, one can see that I mean how the in one hand there are the natural rocks which are here which which dots the landscape with, with all this different um, you know hues and at the same time the same material is then incorporated for making those covered corridors for making this this bazaar area or the marketplace and at the same time we also see how um, the the this this pushkarni or this water body was also created and then then the creation of the water body and then excavation of it and then also paving the sides and everything all incorporated the locally available stones so here is also a map of 
uh, Vijayanagara or Hampi and here you can f clearly see that I mean what I was talking about in terms of the royal center and then also the spaces which are considered more sacred. So here is the river Tungabhadra in the left side of the screen and then by this area we have there are several important temples. So there here we find this very uh, important temple uh, dedicated to uh, Virupaksha and then Virupaksha is uh, considered to be a, a form of Lord Shiva and who is also the consort of Goddess Pampa or um, you know who is the personification of the river Tungabhadra and this side there will be the Matunga hills on the other side of the river. River. And then for that reason what we find here that there are uh, there is this temple site and then there are the bazaar and all this. So and there then there are other places for public gathering at the same time like I mean the social other activities. For those reasons the, the site which are close to the river one can see that I mean those, those areas are considered as like the sacred center. So there are more of the temples and social activities and everything else. And then we find this particular area to be more secured and that is one can see that this is the area which is fortified more uh, vigorously and that is the place which is the royal uh, center. So the royal center is like a fortification within the city of Hampi. So one, uh, so this means that I mean this, this places are of high importance to the state and that is the reason why that needs to be protected. So here in the right side of the screen we have another image in which we find that there are there is this uh, there is this open area which is uh, either that is flattened or this valley like space was found and utilized for uh, making it as, as, as a market. So we see this long promenade here like here and it is a broad promenade from which like I mean people can walk through and perhaps like the vendors and all those people can also gather there and then by the sides we find this colonnades or this covered corridor ways and through which one can walk through and then people people also can sit there and sell their stuff. So that is how some of the, um, the, the, the structures of the bazaar areas that we find them to be existing. And um, so uh, making this structure stable is also something that is highly dependent on the kind of material they use for building. And it comes with no surprise that stone would be the chosen material for that because of its durability, stability and um, you know of course I mean how that, that also gives protection. So those are the things that we find that how um, this, this a very interesting site of Vijayanagara or Hampi where we find the natural boulders and at the same time how those natural boulders or those large chunks of rocks they were transformed into the architectural fragments like the pillars and then then the um, you know the bars and then of course so th all those all of them they, they were made into those architectural fragments and that is how this entire city space was constructed. So talking about the use of stone, we also find that I mean that there are also as we have already noted that the, the material characteristics of the stones, so they, they have uh, contributed to the, to the final outcome of the images that we see on the surface. So here what we have in the right side of the screen, we have this very well known temple in, in Vijayanagara or Hampi and that is called the, uh, um, that is called the Ramachandra temple or Hazara Ram temple and Hazara Rama temple is called because there are numerous reliefs this this narrative panels which depict the story from Ramayana. So that is the reason but it is called like the thousand Rama temple or, or the, the numerous narrations about Rama and that is how this came to be known as the Hazara Rama temple. Now if we see that what is there the, the characteristic of this relief. So the relief here what we see there are those rectangular pieces of stone like this one. It is almost like a larger version of the bricks and then what we have that in those rectangular uh, pieces of stone there are the carved images and then all those carved images are joined together for either continuous narratives or like just uh, separate 
narrative scenes, but that is how like I mean one after another they are put together for making the entire enclosure. And here what we see that there is this um, all all these are happening in the all these are happening in the in the exterior wall of the uh, temple here and. This, this temple is uh, um, entirely made of the granite uh, stone. So that, that also affects the making of these images. So for example, if we see if we have if we come close to the, to the surface, we find that the, the surface is quite uh, rough. So it is not really like it was uh, made, it was smoothened and then uh, the execution of the figures that we also have there, they are uh, been, uh, you know, they are executed with the vital or the primary expressive uh, qualities, but they, they are also uh, at, at a lot of times we find them to be devoid of much finer details and there is no surprise that why this is also devoid of much finer details because of the character of granite in which we can find that um, the carving chiseling onto the top of the stone itself is such a tiring and tedious work that to have the images um, um, separately carved and having all the possible details on them, it will probably not be possible to have them as part of this such a large project. So those are the things that we find that how the, the character of the stone, the, the, um, the also like I mean the kind of challenges that they pose to the artisans or the sculptors all of those things that the material qualities and then the details of the production how all of them they affect heavily on the on the final outcome of these images or the final outcome of uh, you know this this temples or the sites now if we move to the left side of the image then there is also something that we see about the about the use of materials something that i have touched upon in the earlier lecture where we find that there are different kinds of material incorporated for making certain kind of structures so here we have a gopura or the entrance gateway and that is towards the vitthala temple or vijaya vitthala temple that was made in the 16th century and um, so in this one what we have then the, like the base of the gopura the gopuras are the ones which are the pyramidal uh, and uh, really monumental and lofty gateways which announces the uh, or like i mean which marks the entry to the temple complexes in southern india so we find that there have been um, this there have been the gopuras in the in the um, or, or like the entrance gateways uh, during during the chola period and so on but then after 14th century we find that uh, the 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 making of this gopuras that had actually became much more uh, sort of pompous and much uh, importance and skill and resources were spent for making these gigantic gopuras and at a lot of times we also find that i mean how the later rulers they have added to the existing temples so they did not make any alteration to the main shrine or the main temple complex but then they added these lofty towers the temple i mean uh, this lofty uh, entrance gateways so that their presence even though they have added those things at a later time their presence can still be remembered by um, the people in the you know during their time and in the successive generations. So here what we find this in this making of the Gopura in the Vijayavatthala temple or the Vitthala temple here the base of the Gopura is also made of granite and as we see that I mean the, the base of the Gopura that also has the there are the horizontal registers in which the entire surface is divided with keeping this central gateway keeping a large space for the central gateway and then the, there are also like I mean the, the architectural motifs which are used there, they are also the repetition of the columns and, and the, the smaller version or the miniature versions of the shrines, they are, they are all placed within the Gopura structure the, in the base of the Gopura. Now on the top of it we find that I mean here there is a completely different material that is used and that is 
uh, brick and lime mortar. So those are the things which we know that I mean they have they, they are much more lightweight material. So if we think about the scale of the Gopura which were really monumental and lofty as, as I have already mentioned it before. So there needs to be a sound understanding about the weight of the material and how that can be uh, handled in the real space. So if there is an entire this pyramidal superstructure that is there on the top of this uh, entrance and then it might not be the entrance, the base might not be able to hold the weight of it as good as uh, it might uh, you know be with for the brick structure. So that is the reason what we have here is that there are the um, you know, th there is there is this uh, importance of uh, this this uh, the brick structure on the top of the granite one, and so th this is this is also something that one can see that people have uh, people have been aware of the of not only just the possibilities of using stone for example for for protection and locally available material and everything else but it's also like they were aware of the limitations of the stones as well so if there are particular kind of structures there are particular kind of projects which required this kind of vertical growth like the gopura then stone will probably not be the most suited uh, material that we cannot say for all the uh, structures so for example if you are thinking in terms of the raja rajeshwara temple in um, tanjavur but like i mean the entire temple complex when uh, is is big enough to hold the weight of this uh, the superstructure or or the or the shikhara on the top of it then one can see that I mean the use of granite can be justified, but not for a smaller structure like this Gopura or, or this entrance gateways. So those are the ways in which we can see that people were, the, the, the sculptors, the artisans were um, aware of both the possibilities as well as the challenges posed by this material and that is how they have, um, they, they have uh, made alterations to their practices and that is how they, they, they have carefully chosen the material for pursuing these works. So from there I wanted to get into this other use of stone and that is for making memorial. Now in Vijayanagara, I mean uh, if we think about the, the, the southern part and part of the Deccan plateau in, in, in the Indian subcontinent. So in Vijayanagara we have the, uh, a number of this uh, the hero stones and the sati stones. So let me, let me first introduce what is hero stone or what is a sati stone. So hero stone is basically a kind of memorial stone, a memorial plaque which would be uh, vertically placed on ground. So usually it can be um, you know adjacent to a wall or that can be just um, you know rooted in the, in the ground like a pillar and then uh, uh, this this kind of this memorial plaques or the stones they are usually rectangular or uh, in in shape and um, the the stone slabs are then carved into making different kinds of figures now the the hero stones we find that i mean they are the ones the memorial stones in memory of the heroic figures either from the royal army like I mean if there are uh, if there are soldiers or the other officials who are important ones and their family or the community members they remember them so that is how we find that this this uh, male members of the royal army they they, uh, they can be also mem memorial uh, memorialized in in through this hero stones there are also some of the other examples for for example that I mean if someone dies during a war and then they are also considered to be the heroes. So this kind of hero stones are also erected in memory of them. So apart from that there are also some of the other examples for example the one we have here and this one also comes from the Vijayanagara period but that comes from Mallam in the Gudur Taluk in Nellore district in Andhra Pradesh. So in Nellore as you remember that I mean some of the early uh, the stone tools we have also looked at as part of this uh, discussion on stone. So is this is the same district from where we also find uh, this, this particular 
Empire hero stone and this, this one is perhaps from uh, 16th or uh, 15th century. So, in this one we see there is a very, um, there is a very specific kind of um, practice that is being performed and uh, author Mary Storm has, has uh, written about it. So, uh, this is something called Dehatyaga and that, that basically means that leaving the earthly body. And so, in this hero stones, in this group of hero stones that we find in the Nello district here, they, they actually depict people th who are willingly sacrificing their own life for perhaps for the deities or, or for other causes. So, in this one we find that there is this, uh, th there is this man who is perhaps in the, in the process of chopping his head and so and one can see that I mean even though the, the act of like I mean chopping one's head that might sound gruesome, but here what we see here is that uh, this, this, this person he stands still and unlike the ones uh, we see in the narrative scene where there are profile views of the figures, here we see they stand still and in the frontal view almost like they are the deities. And then uh, if we also see their expression, their expression is calm and um, there is there is really no uh, disturbance in their face. So, it is a very calm peaceful position and, and their expression also adds to that and at the same time what they are performing is uh, something that is that, that we do not associate with peace or um, you know with, with the regular activities. So, that is how the heroism of these characters are being portrayed in it. To have the contrast between this calm expression and this, uh, this, this act, this almost gruesome act of, of sacrificing themselves for um, whatever cause. So, these are the kind of things that we have that how these memorial stones they, they also contribute to our understanding of um, the, the, the material culture and how that is used. So, the one of the one of the uh, the purposes of making these hero stones was also to uh, to make these people who have sacrificed themselves as immortal in the public memory so for that reason one can see that i mean using the locally available granite stone or basalt stone was a uh, you know an appropriate choice because the stones they they are they are long lasting unlike wood or something that is drawn on paper or, or any other expressions. So, to make them immortal in the public memory, they also need some kind of material which will also be long lasting. So, that is how we find this hardest, one of the hardest stones on, on earth like granite is used here for, for uh, making this uh, hero stones. Thank you.